Welcome to Steph Reacts. We are going to react to another episode of Craig Fox on Caffeine. But before we get into that, do know or did you know your daily facts of the day? Your daily facts of the day is happening right now based on the Warriors vs Celtics game. At, at the time of this recording, game one has been completed and the Celtics won. I just would like to to point out that you hear it here first that the Warriors will win in game seven. I said that my prediction would be whoever wins game one, the opposing team will win game two and three. And it's going to be tied two two going into where will it be going into? Warriors, Warriors, Celtics, Celtics. It will be headed back to Warriors tie 2-2. You hear it here first. And uh, the Warriors will win in game 7. It's going to be a close series. So, that's my prediction. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I am hell of an awesome guy. So, let's go to the video. <laughs> Hey, hey, Hold on, one time. Oh my God! Welcome to Craig Facts on Caffeine by way of the greatest uh, company. It is so good to see Pat on the podcast. Awesome! I hope he does another host of Roast Me Again. Been in the world, all deaf digital man, and one of my favorite favorite people, man, uh, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Pat? y'all? Uh, What's going on, Pat? Hey, man, thanks for having me. Man, thanks for coming, man. It's nice. Pat is <laughs> a pillar in this fucking online comedy community. I'm trying to figure out somebody to parallel who Pat is in comedy. I'm trying to think musically somebody who represents what a Pat represents. I think Pat would be like a Puff Daddy. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Pat is like the like, puff uh, daddy the of urban online comedy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Fly yeah. nigga. Yeah. First of all, Pat's <laughs> fly gets all the bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I see him all the time, man. And uh, <laughs> But his ability and discernment of comedy, bro. When did you know you had the ability to recognize not only talent in yourself, but other people? Um... I don't know. I mean, I like. I think it was probably way before social media, just because I was always looking at like the next stand-up comedians and and really paying attention to that, even though I had no interest in comedy myself. Right. And even like artists that would um, you know grow up grow up to like you know become like huge successes. I was always looking at them and I was be like, okay, I could see him going far. I don't really get the appeal of that. So I was always kind of looking at stuff like that, and then just. I just kind of like fell into the social media thing and just had to study because I started behind the camera. Right, which I right. I think is important. And you know what's crazy? I'm reversing what you did. You started behind mm -hmm. and I started in front, but now I'm studying and trying to learn the behind the scenes shit. Okay. Because I didn't really under, I mean, I, I understand the work of behind the scenes, but I didn't appreciate it mm -hmm. until I started trying to produce my own content. Nigga, this shit is hard. Right. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I, anybody that's trying to get into content that want to be in front of the camera, start behind the camera and learn that shit first. Because it gives you a newfound respect for the craft, right? I think it, it ultimately makes you better uh, in front of the camera, too. Because I think that, like, understanding the show, like... For instance, like Craig, like, like this show itself, if I feel like even producing it and seeing, you guys can't see it, but there's like these giant screens with all these camera angles, like coming in and sitting down and, and doing your thing and then leaving is, is, is hard, is a very hard job to do. Talent is, has a very difficult job, but when you see all the other stuff and you're like, you understand like cameras and even simple things like walking on camera and not having your back to the camera, just like very simple things that will make you a better, better on camera too, just from, you know, producing it. So I think it's just, I think everybody should do it. It's ultimately going to yeah, make most, their content better. Most definitely, because I think what new niggas have the tendency to do 
when they're trying to create content, and you could probably vouch for this, niggas like me, because I've been this guy, we have very grandiose ideas of what the fuck we can do. All kind of explosions <laughs> yeah. and car chases <laughs> and jumping out of airplanes and aliens and Martians. Yeah. And nigga, nah, for real. that's not going to happen on a YouTube budget, nigga. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> that's not going to happen. You'd be surprised how much that doesn't happen on a Hollywood budget. Right, right. You know? And that's the number one killer of ideas is like, I, I, I can't tell you how many ideas, you know, that were pitched to me and within the first seven seconds, I'm like, I don't know if we could do this. That'll work. But I, I'll listen to the idea because I like, I like, you know, the creative process, but it's like, if it's all off top, like the number one pitch I get is like, yo, we should have this, we should do this show where like me and so-and-so go around the world and do, visit all these places. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, what? I'm trying to get free vacations out here. But you'd, you'd be surprised. Like, even early All Deaf, we had all these producers that had all this education and went to, like, school for being a producer. They didn't know how to make anything work without, a, you know, dress, dressing rooms for the talent and, right. and trailers and, and all this crazy stuff. So we got, we got to do it, like you were saying, working backwards. We got to start how we do stuff with nothing. So now it's like when we get brand deals and, and bigger opportunities, um, we just we just know how to really like, you know, squeeze the juice out of every production. Let's talk about the beginning, Pat, because a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. you worked your way up from the bottom. Yeah. You when I met you, you were uh, giving away mints and a porta potty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 These humble beginnings, humble beginnings. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what I said. I need to I need to turn my shit around. Pat was bringing lunches, and, and you motherfuckers that don't understand this Hollywood shit, you look at the glamorous part of it. Pat started at the bottom, nigga. Assistant, uh, then office PA, then equipment manager. Um, yeah, it was, it was, you know, I was, I was getting Russell vegan smoothies and all types of stuff, getting uh, the CEOs painting their... Um, Cause I, you know, I, I, I became the assistant of the vice president, and sounds like a real rags to riches. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it was crazy. <laughs> we're talking, we're talking short dread pack. We're talking struggle dread, real short dread, like stupid, like wore dress shirts to work. Out. No, no, no fucking reason. Everybody was like, "What are you doing?" I lived a hard life. No, 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 no. I wasn't an assistant to Russell Simmons. Um, it was uh, it, um, another uh, producer named Aaliyah Williams. Shout out to Aaliyah Williams. She, she brought me in, um, but then she ended up leaving. So I was just kind of like, all right, what am I doing here? And so I just found ways to make myself useful. And I know that all the CEOs were just moving into their offices. And I found this paint that let you paint on the walls and then you could write on the walls. So I was just like coordinating painters and green screen and setting everything up. And I didn't know anything about cameras. I, I, I was the equipment manager, so I was just all day just chilling with all these cameras and lights, looking them up, and and you know just figuring out how to use them. Um, but yeah, I was basically just like taking Jay Snow and Cynthia. They had their productions, and then like you know all the King Kiran. I was basically like putting their equipment together, slating their their um, productions, helping with camera, uh, yeah. light, all that kind of stuff until they let me produce my own stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. When have you been wrong in the business? Where you were like, I was completely fucking wrong about that. I wish I would have just gave that more thought and consideration. Um, there, okay, so I have a, I, I, I will talk about a time where I think that we as a collective were a little wrong, you know? I think that 
uh, early, early all deaf. We were in the culture. There was a big internet culture of like nothing but sort of like race, racy jokes, sort of like sleazy kind of jokes, right. because that was it was it was uh, it, there was conflict. It, it got it got a lot of attention. So you know we had um, we had a couple of IPs called For the First Time and um, Is It True. That was based in a good concept. It was like it was in, it was interesting. Like you know, African Americans tried traditional African food for the first time. There was like some type of cultural right. thing, or you know, is it true? Disproving stereotypes. Once we ran out of the good ones, it started becoming very very clickbaity and stuff. So right. it got to it got to a point where uh, internally it was still doing well, but we didn't really like it. Um, we didn't really like outputting. But no one really said anything, and I remember there were murmurings of it. But once we did black people go hiking for the first time, oh, right. <laughs> and I was like, I go hiking every weekend. Um, I, yeah, I just, I, I just asked, like, because we had these like meetings with producers, and that's why we gave out like who produced what. And I just asked, I was like, can we, can we just make it funny instead of like ra racially funny? Can we just focus on funny? funny? And that kind of like. That was a that was a turning point because that's the first time I realized like oh everybody thought the same thing yeah you know so I think that that was probably an example and and ever since then I, I'm kind of like just conscious about that kind of stuff that's that's amazing that you say that especially being a comic I can relate to that right because to me the truth is a common consciousness <laughs> that the talented aren't willing to ignore like. There's a truth that resonates in every situation. There may be somebody with a purple afro or a kid that's musty or something going on, but the talented person is going to say, I got to figure out a way to articulate because I know everybody's thinking this, but everybody's not going to be equipped to say it. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So where did you find the strength to be able to step out and go against the grain and just say, you know, I don't give a fuck what everybody's doing, man. This is what we should be doing. Um... Well, I, I try to move as strategically as possible, and I, I, I admittedly probably wouldn't have, um, I probably wouldn't have made that request or stood up like that if I was um, in the earlier part of my career. At that time, there was, so how it worked was there's a group of producers, and we pitched ideas for, for the first time, is it true, and we were assigned them, and whoever executed them the best or had the more, most viral hits um, was kind of just like uh, celebrated in these producer meetings, and we got you know kind of like um, more opportunities. So it was it was me, and it was a producer named uh, De Desiree Alcarez, and she was destroying me. Like really, she was yeah, just de destroying me. Like she did uh, black people eat Thanksgiving at a white family, like all these things that became like internet classics. She was destroying me on that, but I considered myself in second place, and I was. Uh, producing um, original ideas. Like it got to a point where I was pitching the ideas and all the producers were just making that stuff. So it kind of got me putting my foot in the door to the point where I, I, it didn't, it felt low risk to say things like that. And I think that that's why it's important for people in certain positions to um, speak out. And I've just been annoying ever since. <laughs> <laughs> just because like, if I feel like something's not right, I'll definitely try my best to, to, to voice voice it um, just because there could be a bunch of people in the room that think the same thing but right. maybe don't want to that really shows the leadership style that uh, Pat has grown into over the over the years to be honest and I really I really appreciate that he's able to share this with everyone and it shows the work that producers have to make that a lot of people don't see unless they actually tell you because wow that is something that we never even um, thought about, you know? We just thought that everything seems peaches and creams, but it wasn't that. It shows that everyone had to really figure, figure things out, and that is just something that we learn every day. Uh, feel like they're crossing a line. And that's a very interesting line because the truth is what you choose to believe, you know? Right. So sometimes it ain't even that it's the truth, it's who's presenting it. I have I can remember times in my life where I know I was right about something and just because it was me saying it, niggas wasn't fucking with it. <laughs> right. And that is the most vulnerable yeah. position to be in as an artist because you have to have the belief in self to stick around long enough 
and whatever it is t you do right. until your opinion carries some weight. You know what I'm saying? No, that's that's real. I think that um, yeah, that's that's real. But I think that in in this uh, in this business and just in life, approach is everything. Like how people say things, how people like. Um, like how people like turn their thoughts into. He thinking about a uh, karate chopping on your neck. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is on your mind, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> this Man, uh, it's, it's Sonny's practice squad, Jack. You got <laughs> <laughs> they gotta catch him up. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta finish him up. This nigga's on his way to Herman Munster's house. <laughs> <laughs> that was so just. <laughs> Ketchup. Oh my goodness. I don't know what it is with these jackets, though. <laughs> Show is random as fuck, man. I think I hate lean against the jukebox. <laughs> You don't got enough nickels. You know, nickel went to a diner and got a milkshake going on. Oh, those diners, they only sold milkshakes. And then it was vanilla and brown. Uh, too strong. That's that, that Teen Wolf letter. <laughs> hey, I got a question for everybody. Oh, shit. I got a question for everybody. What's more important? <laughs> Think about it. What's more important? Money or cleanliness? Um, um, I would say, in my opinion, cleanliness, it would be physically, mentally, emotionally. Because if you are clean, if you are clean to a point where you are respectable, and you're not going to, I would say, do something that would harm somebody financially or even physically. If you are a stand-up person, if you are someone that is reliable, that you are loyal to, if you, if you have that kind of honesty to you, I believe things will always happen for you and that's my interpretation of being clean and not just doing it for the money because if you're doing everything for the money eventually you're going to be going down a dark path and uh, no telling what you would do for the money so that's my interpretation but let's hear what they have to say what do you mean cleanliness? You talking about bodily cleanliness or cleanliness Fun. as far as... I'm talking about body, like taking baths, showers, or having money. What are we talking about Fun. important? As far as like in the order of things, like how do you prioritize it? Like, is it like, hey, I got to get this money or no, let me, get, let me take a shower first. <laughs> get, you know, and Would then... you rather be rich and musty yeah. or poor and clean? What, what, what comes first in the order of things you do? Cleanliness. Yeah, clean well, in the order of things yeah, or important clean. importance and the level of importance in your life. It's cleanliness, yeah. cleanliness. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I, I can't even I can't even get to the rest of it if I feel like How I'm. How much money are we talking? Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm, if we're just talking, talking about, about money, millions, period. And millions over being dirty. I take a shower once a week in this motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, if I got millions, <laughs> I, I thought I, maybe I'm thinking too deep into it. Huh? Okay, well, fuck it. Y'all be, nah, be clean and proper on this motherfucker then. If you got right? money, Craig Smith. I'm a deep thinker. Well, I, was just, I thought you meant the concept of money, period, or the concept of cleanliness. Okay, well, okay, ah, so, okay, deep. so you can build a construct or you can jump underneath one that's already built. You can develop your own whatever. Build the planet, and I relate to, I relate to you on that level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Give me the million. Whatever y'all interpretations of it is. I say jump into the money. Yeah. You can have, I, I mean, we all seen coming to America. You know what I mean? You could wake up and have somebody take care of your cleanliness. Easy. Right. You know what I mean? The royal penis is clean. You're, you know what I mean? Right, right. I take that. Royal you feel what I'm saying? Get me out. You know what I mean? <laughs> what? We seen it. We seen it. We seen it coming to America, right? I wouldn't be shouting. I'm saying, coming to America. I mean, who don't want to wake up with a bath for a shower like that? A bath like that. Y'all don't right. want that? I just feel like I, I, disease and everything comes with you being unclean. So 
if you're not already a healthy person, you can't get the rest of it. Or you can't enjoy the rest of it. Right, so right. I, I would start with the cleanliness. If Ain't nobody gonna give you money dirty, though. If you're the cleanest person on Skid Row, what, what does that matter? <laughs> right, cleanliness doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Yeah. It just, it means clean. I feel like money is more directly connected to survival than cleanliness. Mm. If we said health, that's different. But I think cleanliness, like, if we're talking about, like, which one would you have to? Of course, I want to be clean, but you need money. Right. Mm. Right. I, I, I guess if I had to choose, like he said, I'd, I'd rather not be the cleanest person on the street. I'd rather be musty in the mansion. <laughs> yeah, you don't like high smell? Don't come to my mansion. Fuck out of here. What, what do you think is the bigger show of sincerity? If someone offers to bathe you or if someone offers you the equivalent in money? The equivalent in money. But that's yeah. for a bath? That's like money. $20. You could yeah. pay somebody to bathe you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know okay. what I mean? Still, still uh, wait, but money. you're talking about like which one is be a better gesture? Which one, what, which one is a more s uh, s sincere gesture? Someone who's willing to bathe you or offer you money? For free? Always bathe. I mean, money. Yeah, I would say bathe because even, even as a person, I would say I would compare it to a person that is elderly. If an elderly person cannot do that for themselves, if you have a a family member that is willing to do that, that shows compassion, that shows love, that shows everything, that shows that they care about the person and everything like that. So I would say that. Money, I think, is the quickest. Nah, because money gives you the opportunity to make choices for yourself. So if you right. wanted to hire somebody or take a yeah. shower or do the, all the stuff, you get to make the choice. So if somebody's just offering to bathe you, they're not giving you a choice to make a decision on your own. Like, you can make a decision on your own with the money. But that's more giving, isn't it? Like, it's like, it's like, it's like a gift, you know? Like, a gift, money is always a great gift, but people who are really good gift givers get something that's, like a uh, custom for that person. So I think just in terms of the question of the gesture, bathing somebody is pretty intimate. And it's like, I mean, they did that in the Bible and stuff. Like, seemed like Jesus right. was getting washed every chapter. Yeah, Jesus was in the bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was in the bathhouse. And, and, yeah, Jesus was, was getting the, washed. Uh, in the happy endings, for sure. <laughs> yeah. In the holy happy endings. Uh, so if, if somebody offered to if somebody offered to give you a bath that this is going to be a hundred thousand dollar bath like we're going to give you the works and all the creams and the sauces or whatever a hundred thousand dollar bath or to give you a hundred thousand dollars give me nigga I don't need no dollars. creams and sauces give me the money exactly right. that's what I'm saying yeah, okay. give me the money. but that's our preference yeah. I think from our end that's what we'd rather get but from their end I feel like. A bath is a better because if they if they're offering a hundred thousand dollars also then they got it. That's not like a. Oh, right. mm. But I, I feel like money can be gestureless. You know. Yeah, anybody you, have a dog or animal? Yeah. I just yeah. my dog just died. Oh man, man. I'm bro. rest in peace, man. <laughs> yeah, so let me no tell way. you something. If yeah. you've never had an animal, bro, I grew up. I had two cats. Anybody that know me, no, I had You're two cat cats. Person? I, my mom was a cat person and it made me, I like dogs and cats, uh -huh. but I had a cat named Jazzy lived 28 years. Oh, wow. And another cat named Jenny lived 24 answer. years. Wow. Mm. And when I tell you, nigga, when them cats died, I have, besides when my grandmother and the close, my niece passed, I've never been so emotional. I was like, Man. I can't believe I love these fucking cats. These <laughs> like, this is crazy. Like, nigga, like more than people, damn near. It was weird as fuck. You know? I know a nigga probably thought I was weird, but I'm just telling you. So, but when your animal licks you, it's bathing you. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying right? to uh, groom you. Yeah. And if you're really connected to your animal, yeah. there's really no amount of money in the world somebody could offer you to make you fuck with them more than your animal. Hmm. I'm tired about to go buy a cat tomorrow. What if they bought you another animal? If, if your dog, if my dog, <laughs> that's not on me. If my dog came up to me every time he wanted to lick me, but he had $28 with him, you would love him more? Yeah. In my personal experience, I've, I've had cats growing up. I never had, well, technically we did have a dog growing up, but it was found. We found it as a puppy. And he grew up and it eventually died. But we are more as a cat cat family. But I must say that I've grown such a connection with cats that I cannot see myself probably 
in the in the future if I'm able to have a cat in the house like it's that serious because you know I kind of got so comfortable that I've learned the mannerisms of cats and everything so yeah let me know what type of animal you like and have you ever experienced any death with a close animal and let me know how you how you handle that situation <laughs> Hooking me up. Shout out to Blue. Hey, imagine you were at his house and you saw that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is fired up. Appreciate you, bro. I was like, nigga, what are you doing? What the fuck was that? Wet ass fire. He's doing weird things to that dog. I know. That, is funny that was payment for something. Right. Dog's balling in here. He gave, he gave, he gave, he gave him a match for home last night. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. You know, there's only like a couple animals that can make friends. I don't know if you guys know, know uh -huh. this. As opposed to what? <laughs> like make friends how we make friends. Like in the animal kingdom, there's only like five or six animals that make friends like we do. One is a, one is a bat. Mm. What? Bats, bats have friends? <laughs> Vampire <laughs> bats <laughs> make friends with each other. They have lifelong friends. They meet as strangers. They contribute to each other's lives. Fucking vampire bats. And one of the ways that you, that you know vampire bats <laughs> are friends is they'll regurgitate blood and share it with their friends. Oh, Appreciate man. it. Is that why they call the vampire bats? I'm cool. <laughs> why they call what, no blood for me. Bats took blood out. <laughs> um, huh. I'm not fucking no vampires. Yeah, yeah vampire bats. Um, I thought that was really interesting, That's man. That's very interesting. Sharing what? meals is a big part of friendships in the animal kingdom. Or throwing up. Meals. Yeah, throwing up. Is there anybody out there you love enough where if they threw a meal up, you'd eat it? No. 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 But to no. us, that's horrifying, you know? Right. But to them, like bees, like they just, don't they be just like eating a bunch of pollen and putting it on them and then flying back and just throwing up honey? Right, right, right. Like, right, hell right. yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> I think throwing up is a really good gesture of friendship, man, because... You tested the food first to make sure it wasn't poison. This is delicious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the ultimate. Let me make sure that this ain't going to kill you. Oh, well, I wonder how uh, much flavor is it. Someone in the comments said, someone said that this episode is real like shit. Like, uh, Craig Smith is really asking some weird questions right now. I don't know where he's headed with this, but it's really hilarious in the animal kingdom like how much they because none of the shit they eat look fire right so like if flavor is not a thing for them in every meal they're just like man this is trash right right then yeah. throwing up would be just like anything else you right know? oh that's true because if somebody ate some barbecue and threw it up it ain't gonna have the barbecue sauce on it it'd be trash yeah. the second time you'd yeah. be like what what <laughs> plus in the animal kingdom, kingdom <laughs> the, the scarcity of a meal it's like, yo, he's breaking bread with me. Right. They throwing up blood, you said, right? They throwing up blood because they're vampires. They're vampire so bats. So who are their friends? Like, you know what I'm saying? Other like, vampire bats. Oh, other bats. <laughs> so wait, I thought you did yeah. like other animals. Yeah, 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 yeah. I advised you. I thought you she got a like vampire friend. Animals, like, you know what I mean? No? Okay. <laughs> another, uh, here's, here's another Craig fact, very true. Do you know that the majority of cows in the United States of America are artificially inseminated and they all come from a bull, a single bull, Named Holston, that was born in 1974. One bull? One bull. Wow. He's still living? Wait, what? Okay, I did not know that. Now, this is really interesting. Um, um, to be honest, it's not like it's not that crazy to understand because we, we, we've done so, so much crazy things as a human being and to. If this is real, right, I'm not going to be surprised because as a human race, we, we've done even worse. But uh, I'm thinking that they probably, he's not alive, let me put that up there. That bull has long been gone, but they probably have his, uh, I don't know, semen stored in this factory or something. And whenever they need it, they just use it and breed other other cows or whatever. That's my thought process on it. 
Post this bull is the progenitor of over 80,000 calves. Damn. <laughs> that shit crazy. Austin giving them that sauce. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if <laughs> cows were black and white? Just, yeah. They all look like that because they all have the same daddy? <laughs> That's crazy. That's the year. That's a twist. It's crazy that we're still getting twists. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but never stop. <laughs> That's why I love science and history. It never stops. Mm, wow. Man. It never fucking stops. How many other, uh, what's his name, Holstons? How many of them were? How many other Holstons are there? It's just one. It was just one. the one, the one oh, bullet. Yeah, I'm saying, if name. that worked, though, you would think you would create another one to oh, create, mm -hmm. more, you know what I mean, more and more and more. He was born, he was born alive. When? 1974. Oh, he was born in 74? 74. Oh, okay. He's, he's still out there. 50 years old. He's still out there. Cows are another <laughs> animal that yeah. develop yeah. friendships. Yeah. That's insane. How long do cows live? That's crazy. So I don't know the exact life expectancies of cows, but before they didn't know this about cows because they were only interested in them making money. Mm. But there yeah. came a point in Holston. There came, there came a point <laughs> where cows, were, you know, cows weren't getting along and shit. Oh, so, beef? The uh, cows had beef? Uh, 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 boom. I see what you're Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna name my son. But anyway, all right. Here's the thing. So one of the ways cows show that they love you and that they're friendly is they lick. Mm -hmm. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? And it's it's male humans. We've lost that. Like I, you know, lesbians. They they lick to show love. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I be getting my but yeah, yeah, man. So lesbians get it. Yeah. Why don't Why don't we get it? Why don't we lick to show love? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I you do. do? Um, <laughs> you just said. You just said yeah. that. So yeah. yeah, we lick, lick romantic. To show love. Ask my wife. <laughs> Showing love. I'm talking about not romantic. I'm talking about a friendly lick. Like just on the forehead. Thank you. Mostly because it's no. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't really like gross. though is how I said the cow that did lick lick people was the asshole. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like if you don't walk around licking cows, then you're an asshole. That's you know why when they say you get some money, you hit a lick. Uh, right, right, right. Well, you know what's crazy? We don't lick because we don't have fur like that. <laughs> but if you think about it, when, you know how white people be having the slick back hair? Yeah. You be seeing the old movies where they be spitting yeah. and then like doing their hair with it? That's as close as we would get. We don't really have another reason to. Yeah. Unless you lick somebody's mustache. Right. Mm. If yeah. somebody licked you, though, if somebody walked up to you and licked you on the face. I hate that. And then you'd be like, bro, I'm, I'm just on some different shit. I'm just on some <laughs> <different stuff. laughs> Calm down. I ain't what you think. Hell you know right. what I'm saying? Hell no. <laughs> nah, you gotta, you gotta talk about that before you do it. You gotta be like, right. just, just so you know, when I see you, I'm gonna probably try. You'd be like, up oh, next, hands. But licking, <laughs> licking, is a form, licking for animals is a form of... Uh, Friendly intimacy, you know what I'm saying, like a handshake, right? Right. Um, the most intimate thing that a human can do for another human besides sex is name it. Is what? Name, like giving you a name. name? Your parents giving you a name is a very intimate thing. Oh. Right. right? And <clears throat> in the world of cows, there have been studies done on the production of cows with names and without names, and they found that if you name a cow it will produce 258 more liters of milk than a nameless cow. Mm. Man, that's crazy. So you probably oh, gave, you gave the cow an identity. That's so you crazy. gave it an identity and it became more productive. Right. You know what I'm saying? I thought, I thought that was very interesting. I mean, everybody wants to feel special. Yeah. Right, right, definitely. Right. Could you imagine having a homie that didn't have a name? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what I, that's the, the first thing I thought of was like, I wonder if they make fun of the name. <laughs> like, oh, look at old number seven. <laughs> 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 Where you looking at? <laughs> hey, this is a homie, uh, what, person. Uh, what's going on, nigga? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, name this homie would be funny. But some of your homies may not have names, but they may not have identities. Or, uh, talk about you know it. what I'm saying? Like, some people don't know who they are, that's why they're not producing. Like you said, Ooh. the cow. You oh. feel what I'm saying? Deep. That's, deep. That's, deep. that's what you just said. You said they gave a cow identity and he started producing more. That's so could it be if you don't know who you are? That's why you ain't producing shit. Oh, my. Know yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Message. We're going to go to the first round of clips. What we got here? Uh, a bunch of dicks.
Man, one of my favorite boxers, this He's big crazy. head short nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga Javante Davis hits like a heavyweight, man. That flying punch he do is incredible. It's insane. Cue up the Javante Davis highlights. Go, go, go! Big head short nigga. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm down. I'm down. Oh. Watch out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I don't oh. like. My job. Mm. Oh. It's a little good. Too. This ain't the same oh. fight, though. Oh, oh. 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 sleep. Uh, oh, watch out. He dropped it low. He dropped it low. If you don't see this video, this highlight video, it's probably because it had to be cut due to copyright. Just putting that out there. If somebody knocks you out and does that, there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, that's Ooh, just, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. He hit him loose. We saw that. He <laughs> had it up. That was a late reaction. He was like, oh. Lines, like, oh. 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 That's crazy. I mean, it can't hear oh, you. Say, you know what? Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 we understand. Uh, dang. Oh, mm. Get in there, Ref. Oh, okay, I'm fighting back. All right. oh. oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh. Ow. Oh. I just want to do more blocking. Oh, my God. Oh. Help it. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, he out the damn ring. Yeah. Oh, oh. 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 Are you okay? And he's using his coin jab to try and set that up. No, you're right, because in previous fights we've seen that he, yes. he seems kind of awkward. But that was Ro Javante Davis and that's Roley. Yeah, he's the Did y'all see Roley's... Um, worst shit talking. The, the pre-game shit talking? Yeah, that was oh, the worst no, shit I ever like saw. like little T-Rex arm. I'm like, my dick is bigger than you. Whoa, how did... Uh, you need a PR team. Yeah. All right. It was winning that fight up until that point. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. think about fight. boxing. Oof, that was to that point. I didn't see it because I didn't care. But still, <laughs> that, that I mean, that's what's crazy about boxing is like you could be technically a better point, uh, like technically better until that fi last five seconds. And what? that five seconds is all everybody is going to see. Like yeah. that's yeah. to me, that was the fight, even though he probably was lay like. Doing like a lot of, uh, I don't know, you said he was winning, so he must have been doing something. <laughs> yeah, no, Roley was winning. Javante was losing that fight. Right. Yeah. But that don't, yeah. that shit don't matter no more. Yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> don't fucking punch. That's why they call it the sweet science, man. Okay, so look, you had all deaf digital, they starting to listen to your ideas. And then you get this idea for a show called Roast Me. Mm -hmm. How does that come about? How did you know it would work? What made you even want a chance? Fucking with a show like that, like how uh, to this day, Roast Me is one of their best productions. So you have to give it those for, for our pot for even doing this. He is the goat. How did how did how, what's the gen? And I am going to slow down using the term goat because I believe in this generation the word goat has been given to loosely. But in this aspect, you guys love Roast Me and I love Roast Me. So yeah. Of it. How did it come? How did it come to, to, to be? Um, well, I mean, I feel like I feel like roasting is just such a huge part of Black culture. Um, everybody has childhood memories with it, you know. Like, That's a fact. my family didn't roast like that, but the niggas I hung out with definitely did at school. <laughs> so that's that's where the classroom thing came from. What high school did you go to? I went to Hamilton Hamilton High. Did you go with Aaron Nipsey? Robinson. Huh? Were, were you there with Nipsey? Um, I was there right after Nipsey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Rest in peace. Um, rest in peace, yeah. But um, yeah, at the time in All Deaf, we, we had a couple of you know separate things, separate ideas that were roast related, like Teddy vs. Doughboy or Tony Hinchcliffe came through. Um, we had old people roasting. So roasting st was starting to already kind of bubble on the channel, but we also needed game shows. So I just thought, like, let's do a roasting game show. And um, I built it out, and it was like, you know, you were in that, you were in season one, the rotating spit instead of the hot Should spit. I auditioned, nigga. 
Right. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, in the room auditioning. You remember, I remember that? that? Yeah. I do. I remember you um, You had a joke about saying somebody looked like an Instagram filter. It was so random. I think that was... Uh, you know how long ago that was? That's when Instagram's symbol was the brown camera. Y'all remember oh, that? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, Craig, was uh, Adam Sandler your stylist back then? Now that you've been wild, you're wide-reaching. Speaking of Adam, Adam Sandler, I've met him. He's probably one of the most humble superstars. Oh, I could tell by his uh, planet. basketball yeah. clips. Yeah, he was super like down to earth. You like, can't show up at a gym dressed like that. Not yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just, He's just like a Jedi. Yeah, really. <laughs> he shows me big as hell. <laughs> yeah, like a, a fucking uh, archaeologist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just like. <laughs> Like he got some bones in his pocket. <laughs> Dirt one pocket bones. I like Adam Sandler because he always made movies that it didn't seem like they'd work if anybody else was in, like right. h- him, right. like because they were very specific to his style. And he just put all his friends in every one. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like there was probably a bunch of people that he knew that could have been like a more a, a bigger box office draw, but he just kind of made his own shit. What, yeah. what 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 successful person do you feel? the most connection to that you've never met where you're like I just feel like that's my Kendrick spirit like we the same motherfucker damn I don't know that's a good question um anybody can answer that if you're thinking anybody I mean I, I grew up like the biggest fan of Pharrell Williams and how he thinks and looks at shit yeah um that's very specific to music so that's um Pharrell's fire he, looks, he, yeah. he looks exactly like Jada Pickett's mother. (laughs) 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 I was not expecting that. He looks like he looks like Jada Pickett Senior. (laughs) 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 Shout out to the Pharrell, one of the dopest uh, creators. Period, hands down. And I'll say this, as the Jermaine Dupri of stand-up comedy, I'm never going to get the credit that I just... (laughs) (laughs) Why for real? Um, I don't know. I just think he looks at things differently. And just like, he he, he was kind of like the... the, um, He was kind of like the uh, anti-cool, which made that cool. You know, like when it was cool to just be athletic and a gangster and all that type of stuff... He kind of just was like, nah, I'm weird as hell, and, and this is cool. So he kind of like opened that lane for a lot of people. And, uh, and he, everything that he made sort of like was, had his stamp on it. So I think that that, I like, I like how he, in early, before he did his own thing, he was like producing a lot of albums for other artists. And that's kind of how I feel I've been doing too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in terms of like on, on YouTube with uh, comedy. I agree, I agree. Yeah, Pharrell is the leader of the weirdos, and I'm one of the followers. <laughs> Nigga is just, I can't even describe it, man. That whole time in history where he was like the authority on dope shit was probably yeah, the one, right. probably, it may, if not the best, second best era in hip hop. You know? Had us looking ridiculous. Man. Had us confidently <laughs> looking stupid as hell. I was walking around with pink jackets, oh, yeah. and red, <laughs> blue ice cream cones all over my, all over my. And people were just like, man, that's, well, I mean, it's, 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 it's hip now, but it was just, it was tight. It was cool that we, like, got to do that, but that's the power of influence, man. Yeah. Like, them, you look back and be like, why, who made me dress like that? So look, Pharrell <laughs> stands on the other end of that camera, and you got to pitch your friendship to him to be one of his inner circle buddies. That's wild what, as hell. What do you say to him? <laughs> that's wild as hell. <laughs> He said, inner circle buddy. Inner circle buddy. He said, pitch a you friendship. Pitch yeah, yeah. That's a tough one, right? <laughs> you can't offer the liquor, me either. You know? <laughs> you can't your dog the liquor with, with that. that. I don't think I've ever, uh, I've never pitched a friendship. <laughs> we all have. Um, yeah. What you mean? I mean, we all, we all pitch ourselves. We, we, we meet people and look. So there's neurotransmitters in our brain that send messages at a speed, a calculated speed, like a car has miles per hour, those neurotransmitters in your brain brain send messages at a speed and you receive them at a speed. So a lot of times you may meet good people and the timing is off because they may not be receiving, you know, the message that you're a good person, you know, at the right speed. You know what I'm saying? And maybe a day later you should have met them. 
and y'all didn't get a chance to hit it off. You know what I mean? Right. Sometimes you meet a motherfucker, and you're like, I don't have time to wait on the right time. Right. I need to put me being a good person in a microwave, hit start, heat it up, and they can see, oh, this is a good nigga. Right, right. How do you do that? Well, you know, for me, I don't... I, I, I try not to move with hidden intentions, you know what I mean? So, like, <clears throat> especially in this business, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Pharrell has pitches of that all day, you know? Of, so I, I think it'd be kind of weird to pitch, like, a friendship, because that's something that's just, like, if if... If you like, if you if you fuck with what I'm doing, then we could be friends. But right. it's not like trying to be friends. I feel like if if anything, I would just let him know, like, yo, you're one of the dopest thinkers of our generation. I think I can learn a lot from you and right. go from there. And I, I would fire. I would more pitch I would more pitch a uh, like, can 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 do you take mentors or can you be like uh, take me under your wing in some type of way so that it's just straight up like I want to be around so I can learn as opposed to being around and having to pretend to be a f like I'm your friend but secretly trying to you know right. what I mean like that's that's weird too you know I I think that's just more more genuine well that's funny that you say that because I you know even though I'm a little bit older than you you've went through a lot of things that I went through mm -hmm. earlier in life than I went through them right um when you get into a position where people feel like you can help them you you see what Pat just said that other people don't see like intentions, mm -hmm. intent is big. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people try to disguise it or what they do is over compliment or right. you know, do a lot of just unnecessary shit because they think that's gonna get you, get in, you know, get in, get in your good graces. Right. Talk about how you deal with that and, and having that responsibility. Do you guide people back into a, hey, you don't have to keep telling me I'm the greatest or I'm this nigga. <laughs> just, you know, like, do you find yourself having to do that or you just let it happen and deal with it as it comes? Um, <clears throat> that's a huge growing process, and I actually have had um, meetings with producers that were, we look at the phone, it's like two hours in, specifically about that, you know, because <clears throat> people who go through that, that, um, that transition of being talent to producer, they, they see it happen with, with the people around them, because Talent to talent, dis relationships are different than producer to talent. And, right. and people started seeing their friends change, family change, all that stuff. And I ended up having to talk to a lot of people about specifically that because it's not really an easy answer. You have to, it's a, you have to remove yourself, you know? Right. I, I, had a, um, <clears throat> I had a mentor early on who was like a, a producer in the business who had this big... Um, uh, guppy shark metaphor. You know what I mean? In the in the business, there's just two types of people: guppies and sharks. You have to figure out who you are, and it's not ev it's never too late to switch over. You can be a guppy, become a shark. You become a shark and get comfortable and look up, and you're a guppy. So, like, the example they had was Chappelle. Chappelle was a horror to work with at this at this time to this person. I don't I don't know, um, but apparently it was just like between like you know unprofessionalism, being late, just for what, whatever reason, these producers really 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 didn't like him but the, the the key rule was always leave a door ajar you know there was never a situation where it was just like well f you then dave Chappelle, blah blah blah, blah. Right, right. you know it was always removing yourself from that and and stop taking offense to everybody there have been right. comedians that i have really put a lot of effort into and i was just like man i want to i want to i want to make something that blows this person up and they burned me in the, in the long end you know right, what i mean right. like you have to you have if, if you don't separate yourself it's gonna, it's, it's gonna really, really mess with you. So <clears throat> just to, I say all that to say like, it still comes down to intent because a lot of the people who want to work with you, that's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people internalize that as a bad thing because they're like, oh, I did all this stuff and now this person's complimenting me and stuff like that. It's like, you know, Kanye even said, if you can't be used, you're, you're useless. There so it's go. like, mm. so I feel like if it's, if it's something, it's all about intent, more than likely that person, if they're trying to work with you because of, it'll help them, you can't cut out the, the fact that that co collaboration can always help you too. You know right. what I mean? People can always bring stuff to the table that you can't. So I think if it works, you figure out a way. And if it, and if it doesn't, you just have to find a professional way to um, you know, not, not do that project. Uh, but at the end of the day, you just have to remove yourself. Friendship. If you are 
in a new friendship and you feel as though it isn't going the way you think it, it is going, it's because sometimes persons may have an intention to help themselves most of the time. So sometimes you just have to be aware of things like that and uh, you cannot take offense if things go in a different direction. You just have to move on and be better for yourself. If you know yourself, things will be different sometimes. So I, I agree with Pat though. For sure. Real spit. And I think that's where animals have the advantage with licking. <laughs> because I feel <laughs> like they can smell all that shit in the saliva. What, you mean like... Uh, like an animal can look at another animal and smell, oh, that's a bullshit-ass cow. <laughs> you know, that's why, like, dogs sniff each other's ass. I think so, because they can yeah, they smell... And they'll be like, I don't really fuck with that person. Because think, we depend on our eyes the same way they depend on their sense of smell, you know what I mean? So we have to really look at why they do certain things. It's not like we lick things for taste, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I mean? I think they lick for guidance because the smell of whatever it is that's on them, the other animal could pick up on that and make a more informed conscious decision, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, and it's, that's interesting. And they live a shorter life, so they don't have time to get to know everybody and build and do all that other shit. They said licking, oh, okay, this my right. don't kill me. You know, I had a, a veterinarian, I took my dog to the vet one time, and she told me that the licking sometimes can be aggressive. It can be an aggressive thing from a dog. Talk about it. Like, so the dog could, like, be trying to manipulate you by licking you. What? Mm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. That's, That's fucked up. Demon. How do you... Niggas <laughs> gonna get trust issues with their dogs? Man. Like, what you looking for? What you looking for? <laughs> That's messed yeah. up. That's crazy. I just looked up 14 reasons why dogs lick. That There's... one on there? Manipulation. My dog trying to get me hard, so I could <laughs> I'm stressed out. My dog been fucking with me. Nice yeah. yeah. That would be crazy because if they knew how cute they were, they would absolutely yeah. use that to their advantage. Yeah. It's yeah. like how babies will like cry until they get something. They're like, that wasn't sad. But they say that was part of the, that was part of the domestication of cats. Like the meow was for us. Yeah, yeah they don't meow to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. That's just like, <laughs> hungry, hungry. And then yeah. they figured out that we'll, we'll feed, feed them. Nigga. Yeah. Something is itchy. Something is ouchy. Something is, they lick because something's itchy? Or they lick themselves? To scratch an itch. Mm. Oh, got it. Mm -hmm. Something hurts. Grooming. Hunger. Thirst. Mouth problems. <laughs> nausea. That's how I knew my, my dog was about to throw up. This is the one that threw me off. Cognitive issues. Mm. They, lick. Got a they lick because they have... Trouble learning. Mm. I, what? <laughs> I mean, that's a cognitive issue, right? Well, I don't get it. I mean, these are all reasons why veterinarians have said that uh, dogs lick, because he brought up his exploration, attention, playing, and expression of love, just because. The well, that rounded out every <laughs> day. That that's literally out. every reason. Now there's no reason. So. Right. Well, my dog had all the And the last one was just because. Yeah, just because. <laughs> right, just because. <laughs> like in, in the later years, like, my know. dog had Alzheimer's. He was very affectionate. So. How'd you know he had Alzheimer's? He forgot your name? That was new, yeah. He told you? <laughs> he yeah, barked, he forgot barked. my name, forgot his name. How do you know your dog forgot your How do you know it just uh, lost his, didn't lose his hearing? Cause he was 27 years old. Maybe he just wasn't fucking with me. How did you know? Was it like <laughs> tired of his baby train? Yeah. That's yeah. wild. Wait, yeah. yeah, how would you know a dog has Alzheimer's? There's no way to figure that out. I mean, he's just... blind. Okay, but that's not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you misdiagnosed your dog, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, not a doctor, man. I'm not a doctor, bro. You're an asshole. My dog won't say my name anymore. Yeah. Like, oh. Have you ever? All this, you got all time. All this together equals. My dog is all time. My dog is dyslexic. Got you. Oh, man. Your dogs are just, not your dog, but I just feel like most dogs. <laughs> <laughs> dog is just an idiot. Yeah. Most dogs are dogs. Yeah, I was just about to say, I'm, I'm, I'm a dog like Abra. I'll, I'll have a ball in my hand, I'll throw it, and he'll like go and look for it, and like, and then I'll fake throw it, and he'll go and look for it. <laughs> I don't know if that's a medical judge. Let's call him credit. Dumb as hell. Yeah. Unless that was part of the manipulation. Yeah. To make right. us think they were doing it. Talk about the brand motherfucker act like he's throwing the ball again. And he <laughs> he What's the dumbest you? idea that's worked for you? On the internet or period? <laughs> we'll, we'll do both. Damn. I have, I have did some dumb ideas. I'll tell you mine. What? When I was younger, we used to throw parties. Backyard parties and shit. 
and the police would break them up. So one time a party got broke up and it was a crowd of motherfuckers following us and I just pulled in front of a random house and, and opened the backyard and started charging people to get in somebody's <laughs> backyard I didn't know. <laughs> and then what? I bounced. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the dumbest shit I ever did. That hey, worked. Craig is for sure that nigga. Is just like I paid the parking attendant. <laughs> <laughs> like, you need a buff nigga with a. Bu- I can tell you that you cannot try with Pat with uh Craig did because you would get shot if you go in somebody's yard to do that. No time. Hey, bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Big, yeah. uh, $45 for parking. Right. <laughs> bunch of people in somebody's backyard, they don't know smoking weed, drinking beer. <laughs> you come out, right. hey, watch out, but I'm paying you to get in here. Yeah. Oh, the, that's the scary part. If you live there, <laughs> you would look outside and see all of them. Like, what am I like, worried? Like, yeah. we don't get caught. You know, like, yeah, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Yeah. all the first ones to get here. Go yeah. <laughs> Everybody. Niggas going in to use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking on the door. Yeah. All y'all got is Doritos in the car. <laughs> y'all chasers. <laughs> <laughs> Who pork, are you? Is this pork right here? <laughs> right. oh, got the ice. <laughs> that's that's the dumbest shit out there. I've done some other stupid shit, illegal shit, but that's like, I could have yeah. really, yeah, I could have worked. Really, if, if that would have went bad, I'd still be in jail. <laughs> you know no, for real. <laughs> I don't know. Man. Dumbest idea you guys had that has worked. Remember, I told you my time is a criminal child. Right, right. I was not a member of the Boy Scouts of America, but we, my cousin and I created the Boys Brigade. Right, right. And went around house to house. I typed up the whole thing. That sounds The manila envelope and the printer. Yeah. Get you far back in the day. Damn. <laughs> See, to me, that's not a bad. That's not a bad thing. It's misguided. Yeah. <laughs> what? But him coming up with a fake fundraiser to raise money for him and his boys. <laughs> <laughs> but, did it, but did it go back into the brigade or was it just y'all? It was no brigade. Yeah, just, oh, it was a front. I thought y'all made like another club. No. Yeah. There was no. We weren't members of the Boy Scouts. See, I did make that's, another club. Oh, yeah, we did make another clip. The That's probably one of the most innocent scams I've ever heard, That's though. fantastic. Because it's like, <laughs> when you hear about it, you're not that mad. You're like, oh, you just gave yeah. to a fake Boy Scout. Yeah. It's not that crazy. It doesn't seem that intrusive. But the, th- the weird thing about being a kid is you guys weren't asking for no real money. Right. right. You could have really went big. That's what I'm, no, right. that's what I'm saying. You could have been asking for like $100. Dollars. And, yeah. and the niggas was giggling after yeah. like, Y'all got 80 bucks and we're cool. Uh, we had blue heat. We got like three. I mean, that's crazy. Were y'all taking like credit card information? No, no, no. Did y'all have uniforms? Yeah, that could have been a no, one. No, no uniform. Felony, real quick. Nah. Boys for cash. We just said, y'all white t-shirt, t-shirt. Khaki. Everybody wear a t-shirt. Khaki cargo shorts. White dumb, t-shirt. The dumbest idea you've had that's work. Ah, oh, man. I ain't really had no dumb idea that worked. Maybe like, you know, the uh, school where they send you, you know, the, the candies, the yeah. candy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of just get one of them and go around telling people you're selling candy you're probably never going to see again. Right. right. Pocket the cash. You know what I mean? Right. right. I ain't really got no, you know, no out there stories like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> you see it? You see it? Yeah. 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 I'm going to put it back on y'all too afterwards so you can probably tell your story too. But I fake blue balls. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, Wait, is your balls blue? What no, you no. So you know, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. you know, okay. in order to okay. get pussy, you know, I get what I'm saying? I, uh, I okay. pretended that I was afflicted with blue balls. That means yeah. that if you don't bust, 
Your balls start to I'm hurt. I'm sick. Yeah. yeah. That's right after sex, though. I didn't yeah, well, I, I, I told her it was before sex. So I'm like, oh, I got blue ball. Oh, I was shaking and all kind of shit. Like, you got to help me. And then it was shaking. Uh, Please explain. Uh, and the only prescription for this is that puss. Yeah. yeah so they, so <laughs> did it work? If you get to the point where you get no, getting aroused, but you don't get to bust, you're supposed to get quote unquote blue ball. But that's if you were trying to get sex and it didn't happen. Yeah, it wasn't happening. She so was, was like, faking it. Yeah, she was like, no, nah, like I'm not going to make you bust, and I'm like. You Ow, I got blue ball. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then when that first level didn't work, then I had to turn it up. Like, oh. level. Oh. <laughs> you, really, you really, like, convulsed? That nigga was flopping. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga flopped. Oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the die in your car, you only die in <laughs> <laughs> Your last result was, like, she'll give me some pussy if I have a seizure. <laughs> 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 and if this don't work, I'll stop shaking and get out the and car and leave. Get out of the car. Out the car. How long have we been waiting for that? Get out the car. Who is this irresponsible woman who's like, yeah. yo, yeah. he needs to go to the hospital, but he's yeah. going to How long did you try it in the car? Like, <laughs> Listen, give me whatever, however you make it happen. I, at that point, it, I didn't even just need pussy at that point. I would take a head, a whack off. Did you get it? Did you succeed? A okay. whack off? <laughs> what are we doing? That's oh, hilarious. Wow. Hey, front to back, that was one of the saddest stories. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 oh, From the jump. Desperate. Yeah. The desperate housewife. <laughs> <laughs> the convulsing yeah. is just like. They gonna start over at the mouth. <laughs> Maybe she's <Yeah>. into this. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just concerned with <laughs> how dry a woman yeah. would be if she just witnessed the old pass. Then she got to go into hero mode and save your life. They can call the paramedics and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, yeah. oh yeah. shit! She was trying to Sometimes, hey, but it worked though. Yeah. Did it work? My ideas work out. Wax. Oh, you it got worked? the wax? I got the wax. Oh! oh. <laughs> That's kind of funny. The cancellation. <laughs> That's way funnier because now it's like she's like, "Oh, are you good?" Yeah, like I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Now I'm good. <laughs> yeah, right. You healed. I'm healed. Yeah. Ty got a medically in, I owe you. Ty got a medically induced nut. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he got a prescription hand job. <laughs> the green mouse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to her. She didn't want me to die, man. Yeah. Wow. Not the crazy story though. And I don't, if if she were to hear the story, I know she feel she feel like you're fooled, to be honest. Yeah, I got a version of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely hollering, I'm dying. <laughs> it's a <laughs> shit in my heart. Oh, yeah. 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 My heart's burning. Uh. She's now a field medic in the <laughs> 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 just had that urge to help people. <laughs> like I've been saving lives since I was 13. Yeah. <laughs> she thinks she's a superhero. <laughs> she's seen right. all the worst things ever. Yeah. Yeah. She's Magic brought hand. that hand job up yeah. in multiple <laughs> interviews. I said, I saved somebody's life with my hand. <laughs> right. That was her origin story. This is a hand story. <laughs> She said, I'm the newest member of the Justice League. Quick fix. So there's this guy who clearly thinks a seizure to get a hand. She's the hands of a hero. <laughs> now she's like jumping out of a helicopter. Clear. <laughs> she's got a comic book here. <laughs> They shoot, look, they shoot, they shoot the hamburger helper sign in the sky. Hamburger helper. <laughs> oh, man. Handy woman. She's handy yeah. woman. Yeah. Helping hands. Yeah. 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 Put my knuckles through my palm. The knuckler. Yeah. That's hilarious. All heroes don't wear capes, man. It's not wrong with it. begging for pussy. It's nature. Yeah. Uh. Mm. That was manipulation. Back to that. <laughs> like, what are we talking you about? You never for pussy, Pat? <laughs> Um, in my younger years. Right. But I mean, I don't, I, even that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That was pretty really bad. That could have been last year. He said that was 2021. I mean, nah, nah, nah. Uh, ah, you gotta go back. I was yeah. trying to talk into it, but then then you realize that most niggas talk their way out of it. So it's like just right. talk less. That the begging is just you're just digging a hole. Right. <laughs> you got uh, either you act on. Somebody said, "Was it Kiki Palmer?" <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. I was trying to think of a second one. Be next, be next. Nothing yeah. bad. It's, it's, there's have, there has to be more puns on hand. It has to. Oh, yeah. Every time she sees soft soap, she gets a sense of pride. Yeah. No? Okay, fuck it. Yeah, so. <laughs> atmosphere changes when Pac, when Pat is in the room because he, he just is funny, you know? And he he is an underrated roaster. If you look at season three when Pat was roasting, that was the best episode of Roast Me, season three. And if you look at season five, episode five, when Pat host, so far that was uh the best episode. So it's a trend with Pat. If you have Pat in the classroom, he just is funny. He could he could dish out a good joke and he could take a good joke. So they need to have Pat more often, to be honest. <laughs> oh, we're Dating is begging. Everything up is until it? getting the pussy. If it takes you more than seven days to get Pussy, you're begging. Why would it take more than seven days? I don't think dating is begging. Really? No, because begging is one-sided. Dating, I think both of y'all are trying to figure it out. Why are you dating her? Yeah. Huh? Why are you dating her? <laughs> <Please. laughs> yeah. yeah. To... For pussy. Yeah. Yeah. And you taking her out so? to all the nice shit, the huh? nice restaurants and shit. Is that wrong Damn. with begging? Why is she dating you? For dick. There you go. That's not begging. All you right. ever seen two people on their knees begging each other? <laughs> It, it, it probably would be better. Yeah. No. It probably would if you had to sit on your knees and face her and beg her for pussy, and she had to do the the. You see each other at your worst. Here's okay. So we, 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 were, we were talking about this whole episode seems to be about the the difference between us and animals, right? Right, right. Animals. Ever since I started doing Pat Geo, I started realizing how horrible the animal kingdom is because mm. it's like. That whole process of figuring out it, it, figuring it out, we are so lucky to have that. Because right. in the wild, niggas, <laughs> it's either one or two things. Either a nigga would just start calling and dancing and shit right, like right, that, right. and a woman's like, all right, go ahead and fuck. Yeah, yeah, right. Or a dude just uh, comes up to it, finds a female, and is like, this, that's a female. That's all right. I need to know. And just, boom, you're pregnant now. Right, right, right. right. And, it's, and, then, and then now that female has to worry about a bigger version of that nigga coming in right, and being right. like, I'm gonna kill all your kids. Now you're gonna be, you know, now you're gonna right. have my kids. Like that's crazy. So at least we can eat <laughs> and, <laughs> crazy. and go bowling and watch. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I kid you not. Like I feel like growing up is realizing that women either go to that date or figure it out in the first few minutes whether or not you gonna smash. So it's not begging. It's really not fucking up. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but that's you know why I, mean? I think that the saliva of an animal tells that story. Yeah. Which is why they lick who they like, because they can smell that saliva and they can smell Fair all much. the things exactly yeah. that we have to experience because their lives are shorter. Yeah, but they don't have to think, they don't have to process the same shit. Like, I feel like a woman is just like, okay, that's a man, he's big, protection, right. food. You know what I mean? Right. They're not worried about, like, wow, he, this. That bear don't make enough money. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, a, lot of, it's like a lot of weird shit that we Isn't have to the go same through. thing? It's though? just equivocal. Money is the equivocal yes. to protection. Same thing. Right. But I feel like that one, that, that animal one is so <clears throat> instinct-based, it can be more, more instant. One of the best things about being an animal is you don't have to stick around and take care of your kids. <laughs> yes, you do. That's one of the best You don't have to. I can leave when I want, bitch. I'm not no deadbeat there, bitch, bitch. I got honey to eat and trees to climb. Take care of that cup by yourself, bitch. I want to just be. Craig do get a point because in the animal kingdom, as soon as they're able to walk, 
and do things for themselves the parent actually leave them they have to defend themselves and find food for themselves so i do agree with pat i mean craig with that example that's a perfect example on how it is kind of different because it's like a child learning how to walk for the first time you know when a parent allows or you know so the child is ready they will put them down and the child will actually try to walk but i do i do agree with craig though are showing like if a bear without his daddy around is just going around hitting other things oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Killing, yeah. killing shit when it's, it's not hungry yeah. <laughs> But imagine if you were like, a, you know how a male lion will show up to New Pride and all them old kids. Y'all motherfuckers had to go. Right. Yeah, imagine you could just show up. I love you, but your kids. Yeah, you got to go. No, no, no. They kill them. Most animals they kill the kids. Kill the, right. uh, I just didn't want to say the cubs of the previous the father. Kids. Right. Yeah. If they run off the father, they kill the cubs. So the animal kingdom is cruel. Here's the most fucked up thing about being an animal. If you lose a fight, I got to eat you. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. fucked up. Imagine getting in a fight with your boy and <laughs> you knock <laughs> out. Bears will fight and then the nigga gets his ass with Outer species. Like, right, outer right, species. Sure. Outer species. Wait, what do you mean? Somebody Not inner species like a Outer species? Most of the time, if if they're equal on the food chain, they probably won't eat each other. Oh, right. Okay. But, you know, for the most part, you know what I'm saying? If if, if a if an animal lower on the food chain leaves, loses a fight to a animal higher, he's going to get ate. Right. Oh, yeah. There's, sure. that, that would, imagine being in a fight <laughs> with your boy and then... You You're fighting for up, your life. And then got your, his leg in you, you know what I mean? Or imagine, like, you just walk in and you see another <laughs> nigga. What? <laughs> so imagine, <laughs> imagine if losing a fight uh-huh. meant you your got dinner. eight. <laughs> your dinner now. Okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> 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 it's it's way way That's like a combination between a deaf and a lion. Yes. Right, losing a, you see a nigga and he just start chasing you like, like a, imagine seeing a car chase, a car chase, a cop chasing a criminal, and, and instead of arresting them, they eat the nigga on the spot. Yeah. Imagine you, imagine you get knocked out, and then in the in the corner of your eyes, see a nigga pull barbecue sauce. Out. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Done. It's over. Some of them niggas don't even kill them. They just eat them alive. And that's why animals have fucked up attitudes because they know if I lose a fight, this nigga's gonna eat me. Right. That's so fuck you. Yeah. Everything is fuck you with an animal. Off top, fuck you. But I mean, like, just to bring it back to like kids, there's like species of sharks that like the kids gotta fight each other to the death, and that's how they learn to hunt. Right. Well, mm. That's called. Damn. uh That's called. uh there's bird. A lot of birds are like that too. That's called animal. Birds. Shit messed up. So they fighting from the jump. That's called, that's called sublicide. Sublicide is where the strongest. Siblicide. Sub sublicide. Oh. Uh, it might be sublicide. <laughs> it, might, it might be sublicide. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Somebody look at that. Yeah, it's a cold thing. It kind of works that way with us too. It's just not death, but that's a, there's that's a, lot a of dysfunctional death. ass family. Yeah. There's a lot of emotional death. You know, humans, we have emotional baggage. We hold on to shit and don't right. let shit go. And some, for some people, that's just, just as good as being dead. Well, I mean, I wonder, I don't think they did the research, but I wonder if that does happen with animals. Like, do sharks, because they have to kill their own siblings, are they just out in the sea, like, mad aggressive because, right. because of that trauma, you know? Right, 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 <laughs> Whereas right. Whereas if they had a loving mother, would they just be like some Jack Black shark in Shark Tale, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you don't, don't want to kill, kill nobody. <laughs> Is there a shark vegetarian out there, like a great white? I don't, you know, I mean, yeah. I um, I know Baskin sharks, like, uh, people swim with them all the time because they don't like, eat humans, but I don't necessarily know. Right. I feel like the closest to a, like a, like a whale shark that just be eating krill and stuff. That's technically not a vegetarian. Right? No, right? no, you know that's right, right. It, something's got to be a certain like mass for me to consider it a thing. There's a difference between <laughs> being a vegetarian and being an herbivore. Really? Being a vegetarian is by choice. An herbivore is that's just. Oh, you, what they can what process? They do. Right, right. And it's oh. all biologically and internal, uh, internal shit. So, yeah. uh, what we got? What clubs we got next, Daisy? More fights, or we got car crashes. Let's do car crashes. Car crash. Hey, this segment is sponsored by Geico. Car crashes. <laughs> oh, sure. Geico. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. It's really crazy because it's like these people that are like weaving through traffic and stuff. Like, I feel like the fastest you can drive. Have you ever like 
you have a GPS to place and you saw the time it would take to get there and you sped, 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 and you got there like hella fast and you were like, nigga, it's only a two minute difference. Yeah, right, right. Like yep, the difference yeah. is not gonna be that much. So for you to just be like, any anyone on this road can die today is right. crazy. Right. Oh yeah. It's not worth it, man. You know. Hell no, nah, man, it ain't worth it. Trucks shouldn't even be able to drive like I saw a cement mixer in that compilation. <laughs> why why are you driving fast in a cement mixer? You're an idiot. Why are you swerving? <laughs> you should idiot. never drive fast if you're in a cement mixer. <laughs> you're you're an idiot. I guess you've yeah. never been late for a driveway before. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, this just makes no sense. You ever been driving before and been like humbled by the, the slow ass driver in front of you? What do you mean? Like, you driving up the street and this car driving slow as shit, you in a rush, so you smash around and smash past them and the light is red. Oh, this that's the pull up right next to you. That's you know what I mean? Like, but I just be like, man, I still got here first. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you petty as hell. Uh, right. <laughs> I've been waiting longer than you, though. Right. Like, slow ass. I like to fake race people at the light. You know what I'm saying? The light's red, we both at the light, and I like to act like I'm ready to race. And then they smash off. Hey, this nigga's a right. menace. This nigga is a menace to the This nigga is fucking retarded. He is the menace to what we call home. That's fucking retarded. <laughs> where, 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 where you see yourself in 10 years, Pat, in this business? What, 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 what you see being the outcome? Um, shit, I honestly don't know because I never, uh, I never expected the job I have now. I think it's so cool that, you know, as a kid, I was like trying to decide what one thing I wanted to be. And now, like, you know, you can literally use uh, social media to be every, everything you want to be. So what was your initial plan? What did you think you would be at 18, 19? Where did, where did you think 32 would be? What, what's so ideal about my job now is that I had phases. I had like I wanted to be a game designer. Um, I wanted to be in, I wanted to be in, uh, the, I, I went to school for, I went to college for music business. What college? Uh, CSUN, Cal State Northridge. Oh, wow. It's like, it's like a big ass park. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, just like, uh, just really like everything. I knew that my, my triad was comedy, music, and gaming. So I knew that, um, I wanted to just do things in all three of those areas. So in 10 years, it would just pretty much be expanding on uh, the things that I'm doing wow. now. You know, there's nothing like, there's nothing else that I want to do to add on to this. I just kind of want to expand on everything that I'm kind of have a, a hand in right now. Right, right. Yeah. That's dope, that's dope. How do you want to be remembered in this business? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I think that <clears throat> I think that the uh, the the cool my, my my thing is to be remembered is to whatever you do let it outlive you and leave a legacy for others to follow and always remember you by that's my example of doing something like that. The coolest thing about what I do is that it's not just necessarily like. A monetary gain you know what I mean it's not necessarily just like doing a bunch of shows doing a bunch of videos you know making a bunch of clothes for people just for the money it's um it's really just like how I've come to see it as helpful in terms of like anything <coughs> from you know somebody who's dealing with suicide and watches something and 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 that you know takes their mind off of that and, and eases their time with that all the way down to just having a bad day you know i think that the uh being cheered up is a is a magical thing that happens from going from you know having your mind in one area and then having just something as, as simple as a, uh, a laugh that leads to a bunch of other things that turn your brain around i think that's really important so whether i can do that with laughter or music, or just content, or you, I mean, I, yeah. you, you probably know from Roast Me, like our, a, a big part of our fan base are just people who are at work, yeah. who need stimulation and something to do. Man, one time I was, this is when I was like, this Roast Me is real. Mm -hmm. LAPD, I'm walking down the street, bald head white dude with the fucking General Custard Civil War mustache. Oh, you're like, I'm going to for something. <laughs> <laughs> he stopped. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to his partner. They stop in the middle of traffic in the street. <clears throat> I'm walking down the street down to LA, and he says, Craig! Craig from Roast Me. Mm -hmm. He said, you're fucking hilarious. <laughs> That's hard. I was like, the okay, this is a real ass fucking, this is a real... 
This is some real shit. Right. Roast me even for years. Roast me is one of the best thing that ever was created. I remember when I first stumbled upon, upon Roast Me, I watched season 3 on YouTube, to be honest. When I watched that, I looked, and I looked, and I looked for more episodes. And that's when I realized who Craig was. Because I remember watching a lot of the highlights. I was like, man, this Craig dude is funny. And I watched the whole of season 3 of Roast Me. Then, then I realized... Season four. When I when I when I noticed it wasn't Craig, the energy in the room it, it it dipped a little bit, but then it picked up with um CP and those. But the atmosphere didn't it wasn't the same without Craig. But Craig have that impact that a lot of people need to realize he's one of the funniest out there. But um for season five now I have to humbly. Give it to Brent. He's been consistent, and hopefully he wins MVP, and that will be something that we'll all be happy for because he, he really put in the work and everything like that. But um, we have to give it for Patrick for coming up with Roast Me. It's one of the best production he have ever done. And the dope thing about it is, like, I always tell people, like, you don't know what's going to be the thing. You think you know, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. There's no way that I ever thought it, it would be, be because of Roast Me that people started to know who the fuck I was. I right. can tell you a million other things I did first that I thought it would be, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's the biggest thing I learned is just like, you got to stay ready, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't yeah. know what it's going to be. You know? And then you just got to try stuff because Roast Me took a long time to get, uh, to get right. And um, I think that, you know, in terms of just legacy, if, if, if something like Roast Me can keep being made and it's like everything from everyone's affected to the people who were hired to shoot it to, you know, what that show does to the talent who's on it and what they can book out afterwards and then the, 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 the people who see it and what it does for them and, and what they're going through. Like that's that's a that's a cool little chain of 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 helping people. And I think that that's 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 mainly what I want to remember be remembered for is helping people in those three categories creatively. Right, right, yeah. right. That's dope. That's dope. We're gonna go to uh, we're gonna go to some more clips. Now go to go to the uh. Car crashes. <laughs> what other clips we got, man? I gotta take a piss. You know what? Don't go to the clips. Go to uh, go to that other show. Yeah, I got the Detroit Piston. When we get back, I'll have less piss in my uh, system. <laughs> Detroit Piston. <laughs> <laughs> I got a John Sally, Detroit Piston. <laughs> Welcome to Craig Fact. Hey. Oh, the poor hey. Drake. Hey. <laughs> used to be alive, right? I used to just pre record this shit. Right. I'm not used to this either. I got two very special guests in the building. Hold on, let's get that going before we we'll pull a few more cups out of here. Can you fill me in one too, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's two cups right now. All right, man, I'm pouring that drink up. Huh? Tell me when. What I will do, I will skip this part for you guys so you just would see the podcast. Okay. Hey. Drink a little bit more. So, Pat, uh, let's talk about the pivot now. Okay. So now where you are now, the landscape now. Um... What do you think is the next move? What's the, what's the next big shift uh, for you all deaf or just in general? Like, where, where are you trying to take the game? Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of a similar answer to the last one. I think it's scaling. You know, all deaf is in a really unique position because we're pretty much the only, the only black owned uh, company that's doing what we're doing. So uh brands are a big thing right now you know all deaf we co coming up we were like a production company where we would have to like sort of pay for our our own productions and see what happens which is why we shot so much but now we're shooting few and far in between but we're getting to work with uh some brands that you know we were not working with before like hyundai and modelo and stuff like that so it's really like it's a fun challenge for me because every time a brand comes, they need something specific. So I'll have to write a specific show for that. And that's like a really good muscle to to um, to exercise. So it's really just like about scaling that kind of stuff on a bigger um, level, but then also trying to mimic that on my own personal channel and see right. how I can take some of my own 
personal IPs and I'm renting out studios and starting new podcasts and just trying to scale that stuff up too. Yeah, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, so, I mean, even when you write stuff for a brand, you have to understand what that brand is about, mm -hmm. do that research, and then where where do the two worlds meet? Right. And, you know, um, how is that process difficult? You know, how how is working with Modelo different than working with freaking uh, Hyundai, I guess? It's You know what? It's actually difficult just because they need different things, and it's it's hard to keep something consistent like a series when everybody wants different things. Like for instance, like I feel like really hardcore all deaf um, uh, uh, fans have seen this, but like there's a, uh, there's, a, um, there's a show I wrote for Las Vegas. Literally the city of Las Vegas came to us for like the tourist attraction and they said that they want to, they need a show to hike, um, to highlight you know some of our rich stuff but also like some of our stuff that you don't need a lot of money to enjoy right. to give it like more of a family vibe instead of just like all gambling and stuff right so i wrote a show called squad's guide where two two teams meet up they play rock paper scissors whoever loses is the low budget team and whoever wins is the high budget team so there's two episodes night and day where one team goes to like a like a, a this just shows you how creative party is to be honest because he's done so much for the all deaf community that he is he is in that legendary stratosphere right now anything he put out is really entertaining and funny and that's why a lot of people really appreciate that to be honest dope-ass pizza spot and and you see how much money they spend and then the other one gets to do like you know filet mignon and the most expensive burger and and then we did that for nighttime so that was like a really cool ip but it was very specific to right what right. vegas wanted right so when hyundai came they wanted to um you know attach what the, everything that they wanted into something that already had views like a dad jokes or something like right. that but I figured like it would be better to make something custom, but they just wanted different things. So I, it was still called Squad's Guide, but I lost the whole money thing. And now it was like historical black landmarks and HBCUs because they were doing this for Black History Month. Right. Um, I basically said, all right, now the two teams split up, jump in the Hyundai and, you know, drop each other off and go to these different locations. So it's not a money thing. It's really like an experience thing. So. I think that's the biggest, that's the biggest, like, that's the hardest thing is that they have things that they want and they try to fit it into your IP. Right. And you kind of just have to push back and be like, that's not the show, but I can do these other things. Right. Yeah. What's the last thing you said no to? I can't do this. No. Um, not a popular answer. Great taste <laughs> coming back. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. So there's a show, there's a show on All Deaf. It's called Great Taste. Um, I will be reacting to great taste, so please be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys for supporting me thus far. I really appreciate it to have over 1,000 of you guys tuning in. So I will be doing that as well. So you guys stick in with me and I will stick in with you guys. I don't even know where it stands in the list of popularity of uh, between dad jokes and roast me because everybody talks about dad jokes and roast me, but great taste is actually like a, a cult favorite. It was it was just uh, something that people just watched more than once, which is you can only dream for when you have a show. Right. So, um, I'm a huge fan of The Office. It's like my comedy bible. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and I thought that uh, Michael Scott was the best character ever. When he left, he left so perfectly. Um, I could tell that, like writers, what writer-wise, I would have loved the series to end right there. Right. But there he got. They're a huge, huge show. Got executives breathing down their neck. If it's about money, they're like, no, you are gonna ride this until it don't work no more. So there was like two seasons without Michael. It was just they were trying to figure out stuff, and it wasn't good. And to me, it's almost unwatchable. Like I was, I always told myself, like if I had a hit show. I would end it before it died right. so that people would want it back instead of just being like, well, I don't like the show anymore. Right, 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 right. So right. once we saw Great Taste was winding down and it just so happened to align with the end of that era of all deaf, I figured like no matter what, there would only be very special scenarios to drop extra Great Taste episodes, but I don't think I'm going to bring it back. Ah, uh, well. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I thought he said that he was going to bring it back. 
but now that he isn't, um, that's that's totally fine. But I got I got excited for a minute. But um, now that he explained it the way he did, I can totally understand his way of thinking. And there are new, there are other ideas for you know t that can pretty much fill that same void. But worst show you've ever had pitched to you. Ooh, pitched. <laughs> I don't even remember like ninety percent of the 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 shows. Man, I honestly, I, I honestly don't know. Right. Yeah, I mean, most most shows like I don't ever I don't ever hear an idea and think bad, you know, or this idea sucks. When I hear an idea, I'm all ready. I just jump into like the development mode and start asking questions on how to make it work. So there's nothing that really stands out, out as being like, man, this is terrible. Although a lot of them are. Um, if they just don't align with what I'm personally doing or what All Deaf is doing, it's kind of like a, it's just kind of brushed off to the side. But none of them are funny enough to answer this question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Ty, y'all ain't got no questions for Big Pat? Y'all got questions? So when, I, so when I pitched my show featuring Instagram models, called, is your personality your ass? <laughs> Did that happen? Told me to, you told me to get out of your office. Oh, okay. That was... <laughs> See, it's, it happens that often. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't even know if that was real or not. I was just like, which one was that? Which one was that? <laughs> but okay, just to bounce off of that. This nigga's still in high school. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bleacher. <laughs> <laughs> Those are probably the worst ones. The, the ideas that are pitched that are like... This is clearly you trying to be in a situation like that, either where you're like surrounded by women or to get at a specific woman. Like that happens a lot, you know, like that actually had to be something that there had to be meetings about because like producers, a bunch of producers would just come up to me with just like these hot girls and just be like, yo, she wants to be in dad jokes. So she wants, you know what I mean? Hook and it's just like, now I got to deal with that just because you were yeah. trying to, those, that's the worst. That's the worst. Do not ever be that person. <laughs> Have you ever been offered vagina for a spot on the show? Um, not directly, but I'm very careful about that. I'm that very, you didn't take it? No, of course not. I don't, <laughs> I don't hit on anybody that I hire. Really? Yeah. Anything, that, anything that's ever happened has been them pushing it but never for I would never I don't would never want to put somebody in a position where they felt like if they didn't like accept my advances they wouldn't be they'd right. be kicked off of something because I don't really move like that anyway so I just avoid it completely <laughs> yeah ask you a question <clears throat> so to his question for the viewers or whatnot what's the best way for somebody to pitch an idea to you and then what time is off limits like if you see me with my family like if I'm here you know what I'm saying What's the best way to pitch it? And um, I mean, always in person, you know, I mean, like in, in person is always a bad time because a pitch is a very intimate time, you know, and especially if I'm just on the go and doing something. If it's something that, you know, we want to talk, talk about, it's always going to be online. Plus, I'm just like an introvert. Like, I just don't, you know, I don't be like talking on the phone and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when people come up and pitch me ideas, I'll just tell them to DM me or give me my give them my email. So it's pitched like that. But um, are you checking the DMs? Uh, it, 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 depends. it depends. He's not fucking with you niggas. I promise. No, no, no. Not gonna happen. I check. I check DMs. Derek is giving you false hope. DMs, DMs are my DMs are treacherous, but I do check them for business because um, I've had missed opportunities because I didn't check my DMs. Me too. So I was just like, oh, okay, this isn't just a petri dish of yeah. scandal. Well, you got to be very careful, man, because. You know, there's scientific studies that say the human brain is only capable of making a certain amount of good decisions in a day. Yeah. At some point, you start suffering from decision-making fatigue. Yeah. And wow. if you really grind it like you're supposed to, and you get to that point where your head is heavy, so sometimes you just got to shut it down. I know you get there a lot. I get there a lot. Well, if you're really working and creating and doing what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. at some point you got to shut your brain down. That's the niggas that be uh, going to brothels and having just women yell at them and walk them around like a dog. You right, know, right, like, right. Them, them weird stories where they'd be like, uh, uh, dominatrix would be like, yeah, all, all my customers are lawyers and 50-year-old because they just be making decisions all day and they're just like, man, make fun of my penis. <laughs> Humiliate me. Humiliate me on my lunch break. Um, no, you, you need a break from that. But I'm, I'm, I've been really, really good about that. Because I am a creative, I feel like I take a lot of time to 
uh, take days to just watch stuff like that's out on streaming networks or um, play video games. That's big for me. Or just like um, uh, we were just talking about this, like working out. Like yeah. I've been in the gym a lot lately because not like in the sense I, I always made fun of the gym because it's just like, oh, buff, you know, but I get the mental part of it and the part like that, like teaches you how to focus and, and stick with something and that kind of stuff. So right. I feel like that helps with decision making too. When you like, when you kind of like uh, commit yourself to not like, cause I, I would be the person who was like on my phone in the bed till like 11 p.m. or 11, 11 a.m. you know, or, or noon, um, just when my life switched off of clocking in from nine to five. So to kind of like avoid that, I had to start doing things in the morning that then led to better decision making throughout the day. So right. it's like kind of like just like working your brain out. Yeah, you gotta start early, man. Mm -hmm. You gotta start early, get at it, and don't. The more you work and the more you create, I feel like the less judgmental you are. Mm. You know, yeah, because you know it's, I mean? it's yeah. more of a process than yeah. like a big shot. You know, a lot of people who don't pitch or see a lot of pitches, they'll think like, this is my show. If he doesn't like one part about it, He's it's, a hater. Over. Yeah, it's right. over with, you know. Yeah. But I, I go through that process so much that like, okay, here's, here's the real advice. If anything, I would help you do the show for yourself, you know, right. yeah. because more than likely it's not going to align with what I'm personally doing or what All Def is doing just because like, that's just a, you know, we are, we're always doing specific things. And um, so that's, that's low key how I get saved is that I can't really make a lot of these people's ideas. Right. But I can really help them on how to do it themselves because I can, I figured out how to break down any idea and just ask questions. And that shows us too that to be, to be great at something, you must be able to share what you know and be able to help people along the way because that, that makes you better. You think that you're just helping the person, but it makes you better to be able to do that. If you're able to share something, I'm, I'm always say this, if you have a business, right? The best thing for, for, for you to happen, for your business to be successful, is for somebody to duplicate your business. Because if somebody do that, eventually, persons are going to realize that your your business is probably the better business but it makes more because someone copied your business it makes it makes more customers it makes more traffic to to the specific thing so I always advocate for persons to to don't be don't, don't be angry when something is being copied because it shows us that you are doing something great if if your idea is being copied. So don't be mad. Don't show any hatred towards it. Just be appreciative and try to always improve what you're doing, to be honest. Questions until it works somewhat. You have to keep, yeah. you, you have to keep remixing shit, you know? My thing is 10 questions deep. Anything that I do creatively, I ask myself 10 whys. And I literally answer those whys. And if you can't, then if I, if I can, I research. What? Okay. Because there's nothing new under the sun. So anything I think of, I've been influenced, whether it be knowingly or unknowingly. Mm -hmm. So I gotta find. Sometimes I gotta find what was that influence? What made me think this thought? Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And so I get to the root of that. Then when I find that, I get to the psychology of the thought. So what what frame of mind was the person in who cre who created this thought that is influencing me? Were they a narcissist? Were they uh, were they pragmatic? Were they analytical? What made them think this? What's the environment that created this this mode of thinking? So I go into like deep research. You yeah. Know what I mean, ten whys it gets you everything you want creatively, but most people just want to be right about their first thought. You really is creativity yeah. is really an explore process man and right. you can go crazy doing that too yeah. you know like Definitely. I think it's important the, the biggest thing I learned was like I'm a planner just like that you know if I feel like something doesn't work I'll go back rework it rework it rework it I'll look up and be like I haven't dropped this it's been two years you know right I found out that things can be people think people think in their brains that once it's out that's final you know right but people like you know Kanye West, he dropped an album and edited it and had iOS updates and shit like that. Like right. once you put stuff out, it can still evolve. The coolest thing I've ever heard that helped me with my own stuff was that Seinfeld didn't blow up until like what, season two or season three? three. Mm -hmm. right. They didn't figure it, and that's one of the biggest shows ever. And it's yeah. like, it took them two seasons. That's why I love Roast Me, because it's an example of something that 
we dropped, it didn't work, we reworked, 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 and then... It blew. You know what I mean? And that just that was just reassurance that like, okay, sticking with something that you believe in, you can keep editing it down and, and, and trimming. You don't have to put off... If I, just, if I was just like, like not just like uh, thinking about that, all those changes, we would have never worked through it. But it right. was the fact that we got those couple rough seasons that I got to figure it out. And I feel like that's what Seinfeld got to do. And if people just divorce themselves from that fact of like, it has to be perfect when it comes out. It's like, no, you can keep working on it and just let the audience in on it. Right. They'll, they'll let you change with the show. You know, mm. people, people do not give the audience enough credit. No, you know? they don't. <laughs> but I agree. And I think the way that it is. Even, even with me, when I started this YouTube thing, I would say three, three months ago, I actually did. I was doing reactions on random videos and stuff like that, but I put out so many videos. I had like over 200, close to 300 videos on this channel, but it was really not getting um, any viewers like that until I decided to upload the roast me, roast me video, and that blew right up i hit like um i think the highest was almost close to a hundred thousand viewers to be honest and when i when i um saw that i kind of it took me a while i kind of really took a step back and i really like i i realized that you guys really enjoyed it so i decided to rebrand the channel to um comedy reaction type videos or podcasts because that's what you guys like and I realized that the roast me was really something that I can continue doing even if they decide to do more in the future I would transition to do that and everything whatever have you even if they do decide to um, stop for a while if they do take a break I, I know that I can still draw viewers by doing videos that are similar to Roast Me or something that I'll the Roast Me cast in it because you guys really mess with it and I really appreciate that. So sometimes you really have to do just do it. You cannot look at you cannot look at um the things that you do not have like a perfect camera or not having the best mic out there or the best equipment. You just have to try to do it. And sometimes you just doing it, the the persons that watch you will let you know in the comment section below because I, I can remember persons like you guys would encourage me is like keep it up, just continue doing this, this or they can tell you that your audio is bad. So I can correct it next time. Oh, I really appreciate the feedback. Any feedback is positive feedback because it allows you to get better and improve. And it, and it gives you a little challenge to figure out what can you do differently so that the next time you do something, it can be better. Now letting the people choose who they fuck with is the best way. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it, it makes things more sustainable because that's a marketplace that is choosing. I don't want to call us products, but that's a marketplace that is choosing what it wants. Right. right. So if you ignore that, yeah, I mean, that's like ignoring yourself. You know what I mean? The core of this thing in entertainment is to entertain people, not to right. fuck with people that you like, per se, even though that's a plus. Right. You put something out there and you fuck with who the people fuck with. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? And yeah. You know, that's the game. Okay, one other question. Um, Would you, when you have kids, would you tell them to follow your career path? Or would you tell them to do something totally different? Mm. Um, I don't want kids. No? Nah? You don't want kids at all? Yeah. I think, nah. I think this so lineage. So you pull out? I do. Well, there's only one right answer. No, no. That is, there's nothing wrong. If you do not want kids, that is totally understandable. Because I feel as though at this day and time in my life, I feel as though I work totally better. I operate totally better when I'm by myself and I do not have any distractions because I 
I I realize that I do not work with I do not work good with people in the long run because it may start off good but you know tensions and all of that happens and stuff like that you know I I realize that myself I I've learned that that I work well by myself I'm really I'm really good and it's just something that you feel as though you don't really have to feel pressured to have kids because everyone else is doing it but if you if you feel comfortable with yourself just do it and I feel as though I, I'm really focused to a point where if I'm able to make a lot of money I'm quite that's when I know that I, I made something positive in my life because I've always tried to find ways that I can make money and sometimes it may never happen or you are, you you will be close to it but sometimes that added motivation is the pro the progress and the way you learn things and because you are learning it it makes you even better because sometimes you may have a a path for yourself and it may not go that way but because of the experience you put yourself through the down times you're able to overcome and it makes you even better so I appreciate this roller coaster that I am on because in order for us to be even better we must be able to experience things and that makes us better for the long run it's always the smart. It's always the smart people that don't want kids, and then they complain about all the dummies walking around. Uh, well, here's the thing. I uh, I do pull out, but I also wear a condom. Oh, yeah, oh you're a condom. Condom. Oh, yeah, there you go. Double, you go. double protection. Right. Right. I've been a Trojan, super safe. I've been a <laughs> Trojan horse <laughs> since I since eighth grade. Yeah. You pull out early too. Well, I, I, now, well, by now my timing's impeccable. Okay, yeah. but <laughs> all right, all right, you ain't I'm like a ninja with the pullout timing. Okay. But the thing that scares me is the that pre cum be getting people pregnant and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Right. So I just you know double double safe. But I, yeah, I don't want kids. That's um, that pre cum is for the kids that are allergic to peanut butter, though. Right. Yeah, that's how that, 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 that that be the craziest connection. I swear to you. That's part of that. You might have an iron defense. You don't want kids. You might have an iron defense. No, I just, I'd be, I'd be observant, man. I'm just observant. It doesn't seem like anybody with kids likes them. I used to be. That's funny. That pre cum is that shit. I used to pull out. I used to pull out. I used to check the condom in a in a whole nother room. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Nigga, nobody wanted that sauce. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wanted that sauce. You're the one. Yeah. I hate to break it, boy. Boy, boy, you over there with the uh, foosball Letterman jacket? <laughs> then you got a baseball in his pocket. Some <laughs> cat. Signed by Arnold Richabal. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you don't want kids. Huh? Don't want kids, no. But I mean, um, seem like you came from a happy family, though. No, I absolutely did. It's, it, this isn't childhood trauma. I just feel like <laughs> I, figured, I figured out um, that people could have custom lives. You know, I talk about this all the time. I was watching like uh, some chef chef's table on on. It was like this high produced cooking show on Netflix, and there was this dude. He, he was in Europe. He cooked outside. And he had a baby with his girlfriend, but he, he enjoyed his personal space so much that he bought a house and then he bought her house like on the same street and they co-parent, but they have their own crib. And I was like, that I is, agree with that whole that process. is so far beyond yeah. what anybody has ever shown an example to me of my whole life. So that that's when it clicked for me. Like you can have a custom life. Yeah, yeah. So I really just started analyzing like what was for me and what wasn't. And I mean, I'm 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 trying my best to stick to it, you know. Like I, I think that it'd be oh, you, cool. You're gonna start going raw more. Yeah, you're gonna get to some I mean, raw. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. I've I've been I've 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 definitely swayed. I've I've, I've, gone, I've gone off the beaten path. One day you're gonna be like, I'm Patrick, bitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Take the dick. I'm Patrick. You know how much better your life would be if your if your girl lived directly across the street from you. 
It would or be so much better. No, not, if she lived across the street, it would be so much I'm better. I'm down with downtown in Santa Monica. Let's right. put some... I, I'm not, I'm not tripping about the distance. <laughs> right. I'm not tripping about the distance. Because at the end of the day, hey, like, what's, close, the, what's, the, what's the fear? Not so seeing? you do open relationships? I have, yeah, for sure. Really? Oh, so wow. we're a short girl, but another nigga comes over late and, and they go in the other room. You're out there? <laughs> oh, you're out there? That out. was a very specific <laughs> 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 Real open is you got to watch him fuck her. That's real yeah. open. Hey, can you hit them nah, wings up? Heard, we had your pack. Oh, you gonna leave me hanging? All right, buddy. come on, girl. Heat them here. wings up for me. I'll be out. Right. <laughs> you hold her legs up. Need you to hold her legs. I mean, you'd be surprised what what you can make work if you just talk about it and communicate yeah. with it because wow. they might want something similar to that. You know, yeah, that's what they want, man. They Damn, want. open relationship. That's yeah, really want to come in the room. Hey, Pack, can you turn the Xbox down a little bit? I'm in there trying. <laughs> well, both of these examples, you guys are all living together. Like in open relationships, like I don't want to see that. You know what I mean? Uh, he but... wants that Super Mario Brothers where he's in another room and somebody's laying some fantasy pipe. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why are all these examples y'all living together? <laughs> I don't live oh, with anybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a long one. Y'all don't, don't, don't live together. So what if what if he brought your girl over? Like, all right, I, I want to fuck at your house, man. I don't want to pay for no more. What relate? No, you, it's getting a little <laughs> freaky. cool with it, you know. Say it's freaky. That's convenient. Yeah. Don't bring this here. Let's go. Think about. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to you, attack at this at this part because everything is out of. What you just said, though. Freaky like, is you holding hands with the nigga while y'all fucking. <laughs> That's freaky. That's like, I don't know. What the fuck is going on? I don't understand the scenario. Uh, the nigga hit me yeah. up like, yo, I'm trying to kill you and smash your girl at your house. Yeah, like, I don't want to. Our girl at your house. Yeah, I don't want to pay for no hotel and shit. You already got a spot. This shit would be. You got me fucked up. Even if that wasn't my girl, you got me fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have friends like that. You like, okay. <laughs> We need a spot, you know what I'm saying? Just go get some pizza or something, you know what I mean? You can do your shit on the all deaf. You got two bedrooms in this motherfucker. Right. right. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. <laughs> but, but I mean, having, buying them their own house doesn't also imply uh, polygamy. They could, right. It could be mono monogamous. But it's also like if, if they wanted to cheat or you wanted to cheat, it, it, like... Why would having your own house be the, the deciding factor of that? Right, right. People do that right up under each other. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I'm not tripping about that. Right. I sleep with the TV on. My girl hates it. So I wish she lived across the street. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Space is important. You gotta, you gotta miss people. You gotta miss people. You, you, the relationship. That's an argument every goddamn night. Yeah. Yeah. You scared of the dark, man? So you sleep with the TV on? Mm. Man, don't worry about my phobia. Okay, it's all man. good, man. Yeah, right. The relationship, <laughs> relationship complex is flawed as fuck. You yeah. know what I mean? So not enough accountability there. I mean, it should be to a point where if you were a woman and she want to sleep with another nigga or you want to sleep with a woman, you should be able to talk to each other about that. That shouldn't break up a Maybe. good situation. Broken. Depending I on... <laughs> I'm not strong enough. So I said broken. I can not do that. Mm. Like, yo, you go and go fuck somebody and, you know... I'll see if I can get me some pussy. No. <laughs> Is that the problem, though? Yeah, you got to you guarantee. He's not going to get no pussy. Tuesday, that's funny. Right. You know, it's on Tuesday. That's funny. Right. I need to say, I'll see. Say, I'll I'll see. see. <laughs> what if your woman hollered at women and see. brought them to you and then went and did her thing? Ain't Bless no doing women. your thing. <laughs> huh? Ain't no doing your she thing. She let you pick them out. Yeah, she can pick them out for me and all that shit, but there will be no uh, nigga picking. <laughs> 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 there will be no nigga picking. Nigga picking. That's hilarious. <laughs> In an ideal world, we don't want, you know, nobody really wants to share their woman, but I mean, in the, the day, it's her vagina. Her body, her choice. Straight up and yeah. down. If she wants to do it, make it easier for her. Yo, that's been this episode. Of <laughs> and it's been this episode of Craig Facts on Caffeine. Everybody, tell uh, starting with Todd, tell the people where they can find you. Oh man, Uncle Todd Comedy, IG, Facebook, Twitter. Check the album out. It's called I'm Out There. It's a comedy album with uh, live comedy over over beats, parody music, all kind of shit. Man, left me in Pasadena, Taco Tuesday, and headaches. But uh, shout out to the I'm Out There Nation. I know you out there. Taco Tuesday. Yeah. Hell yeah. Taco Tuesday is a, is a slapper, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tell them where they go. My turn? Um. <laughs> <laughs> What's your camera? All right, what's up? Uh, Patrick Cloud on everything. 
Um, I have a YouTube, a oh, Facebook, everything. and a Twitch that are all worth following. I drop different things on each one. So uh, give, me a, give me a follow. I'm a good time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Penn Roethlisberger on IG, Snaptastic underscore Penn. Dina Collective album coming soon, singles dropping this week. You think you ride all the time? Well, I ride more. Hey, everyone. It's your man Sonny in the evening. Don't follow me, but hit the like button every time you go to anything that's Craig Facts related. God bless you and good night. This shit, Chris, <laughs> Chris Sosa doppelganger. <laughs> it's not, you don't look like him, but he dresses like that for real. Uh, <laughs> I was out catching Pokemon earlier, so don't, don't, don't mind my wardrobe. Got on, a, got on an unfinished jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Like? laughs> got in a fist fight in the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I, think, I hit three home runs before I got here. <laughs> Fuck every one of y'all. This motherfucker is dressed like an extra. <laughs> <laughs> and you are dressed like an <laughs> extra. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. You look like a honey nut Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> like a challenge flag. No. <laughs> That's funny. You did your all right more shit? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But she said, I write more shit. Oh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> I know that shit gonna work. Look <laughs> uh, at Craig dressed like a stepdad. Uh, oh, man. Is it still on? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. The jacket is too tight. It's it's right. Circulation. <laughs> hey, man. That's been this episode of Craig Facts. Uh, check it out tomorrow, 3.30 to 6, thecraigsmith.com, everywhere. You can you watch it. This? <laughs> 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 Read it in the sky. Check it out at 6. Check it out. <laughs> and I'm not using all of you for a little bit. about to throw to the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in weather dollars. Uh, <laughs> weather is seven. Uh, 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 watch Roast Me Wednesday, The Craig Smith, Craig Facts, streaming everywhere. On fucking Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. Just type in Craig Facts, and if I owe you something, get it from God. God, God, God! Welcome to Craig Facts. I want to pour a drink. <laughs> this was honestly one of the best. One of the best podcasts from Craig so far. I really enjoyed it. And, uh, just the atmosphere with Pat, he shared so much knowledge with behind the scene being a producer and everything like, like that. And he showed you what it takes to really be creative and have an open mind to learn new things and to know when something isn't working. That shows you the real dynamic behind all of the great things that he's done, like roast me. And to really understand like um, great taste is a great is a great segue but he know that it wasn't really going to go where roast me is so he decided to let that go and that shows you the discipline and the knowledge what it takes to understand the algorithm to know when to give things up and if he want to i know that he can actually bring it back because he didn't allow it to go to a point where they dislike it because I actually enjoyed it, in, in my opinion. That's why I got excited when he said that he, when I thought he said that he was going to bring it back. But um, it's really something that it takes experience. It takes the ability to know. It takes the the maturity and the moxie to stand up on your own two feet to say no sometimes. And I really appreciate that about Pat. And once again, this was an awesome podcast by Craig Fox on Caffeine. But until next time, we are going to react to another video. But this is Steph Reacts. Peace.